Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to continue uh, with our basic Node and Express. I've got a production web app that's going that we've used for managing packages with NPM and also basic Node and Express. This is a real production app that we're deploying to Heroku. So if you want to follow along, you should probably go back and go through them all. So we're, today we're going to get route parameter input from the client. Uh, so when building an API, we have to allow users to communicate to us what they want to get from our service. For example, if the client is requesting information about a user stored in the database, they need a way to let us know which user they're interested in. One possible way to achieve this result is by using route parameters. Route parameters are named segments of the URL, delimited by slashes. An example of a route parameter here would be, we've got learn APIs and microservices. This is a route parameter, uh, basic node and express. This tells us uh, some more stuff. These are all route parameters. So <clears throat> the capture values can be found in request.params. Params. So these are params, OK? Um, route path is equal to user, and then the user ID. So <clears throat> we don't use a user ID here, but and then this, uh, they actually, yeah, anyways. Actual re request, it shows that the, you have a user, and then the, it has a user ID. So you could look it up in the database from four. 68 it's user with the id of 468 and then the book which belongs to the user of 6754 and so the request.params comes back as a json object with a user id equal to 546 a user id to 546 and a book id book id to 6754 so we want to build an echo server mounted at the root of uh, get and then forward slash we're going to have a word in there and then we're going to have echo and we want to respond with a JSON object taking the structure of echo and then the word. Um, you can find the word to be repeated at request.params.word. Um, you can test your route from your browser's address bar visiting some matching routes. routes. Uh, for example, we've got whatever your app is. Uh, for us, it's the like frozen forest or whatever. And then free code camp slash echo. So the response would be echo free code camp. Um, <clears throat> okay, cool. So let's see. They want us to, it looks like they, we want to do it down here. It's get input from client. Here we have uh, get route parameter input from client. Get input from it's query parameters. Query parameters is the next one. So here they've kind of mislabeled it, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, what do we know? We want it, we know it's going to be get. So we're going to say app.get. And then we're going to have, this is the path, right? So our path will be uh, word slash echo. This is our path. And I've been using double quotes up, up above, so I'm going to use double quotes down here. Uh, consistency or re re repetition in code is, uh, makes for cleaner code. And you want to resp respond with a JSON object. So now what we're going to do is pass in, we're going to have a function of request, response, and next. No, no, this isn't a middleware one. We're just doing request and response. Um, and uh, then we're going to, yeah, what do we want to do? We want to say, well, first off, let's just console.log. We can say uh, request.params, uh, right? So I'm just going to run this local server now. npm start to run our local server. I'm running it from our, uh, what am I running this from? I'm running it from the root directory of our application. So if I come over here to localhost and I say, uh, forward slash useful programmer. And then I say forward slash echo. We should have, this is our params. We're logging our params. So request.params passes us an object with a word equal to useful, a string with useful programmer. So that's what we want to echo. Um, you can see that actually causes the server to stop running. Um, so what we need to do is say, we need to respond to that. Um, respond with a JSON object. So we want to say uh, respond.json and then we want to respond with a echo. We want to have an object where we say echo and then in here we want to just respond with the word. So rec.request.params gets us this object. So we want to say request.params.word. Because if we were to say, I'm going to cancel the server now and start a new one. If our request params, it's our, we can say, uh, their request param is equal to this. 
then our rec param dot word is equal to useful program. And that's what we want to echo. So I'm going to exit out of this node thing. I was just showing you that. Let's go npm start. Um, this is going to start our local server. So the one that's running off my computer. And then we're going to visit it uh, using my computer. Uh, let's see. I think I have to stop this. Useful programmer dot echo. Oh, I didn't save here. Ha! Huh. Okay, command S, and then I'm going to come over here, cancel this, and then restart the server. And now I'm going to go useful programmer forward slash echo. And we're getting a JSON object that echoes whatever thing is was in there. We could say uh, useful pro programmer um, school, and you'll see that it echoes that. And so what we're doing is passing in parameters to the API. The API is converting them into a message that just echoes what we say and sends it back to us. And that is semi-useful. So yeah, I'm going to cancel the local server. So now that we've got it running locally, we are prepared to push this to our production app. Our production app's over here. Um, we've got it on a thing called Frozen Ocean. It's in a, in a service called Heroku. And so what we want to do is push this to Heroku. Right now, if we were to come over here and paste in uh, the useful programmer um, echo, we're going to get a nothing, not found, right? Because our node server is saying we don't have anything like that. Um, because our code is saved to our local machine, we need to push it to our production server. Um, so if I go get status, you can see I've changed my app, git add, and say git commit. So we're, we stage to the changes. And now we're committing them, and we say add and echo API path. And then now that we've um, staged, we've committed our, ch our changes to here, we want to push those changes to our production app. So git push Heroku head master. And so now we are going to be seeing, if you come over here, you'll see that um, the app or the production environment. Um, these are the production logs. So these are the logs from our server, which is not here. It's somewhere in the Heroku offices. We're pushing up code from here. And then that's going to cause this guy to reset once this is complete. So now it says that it's deployed and the state changed from starting to up. So that means that now we've um, redeployed the app. And if we come over here and we refresh the page, we get a JSON object with echoing our params, which we pass in via here. Uh, we can say school here, and you'll see even in the production app, it's passing it in properly. And so that's the way it works. So what we can just take our root URL for our application and come over to here and paste this into here, and this should pass. Should never repeat. OK, so that's good to go. And um, once again, over here, <clears throat> I feel like this is kind of um, repeating myself, but this is something you'll see a lot. This is the old way to write JavaScript. The new way is to write it with arrow functions. Uh, this is going to look more modern, and this is what you're going to see more, but it does the exact same thing. And so I've made this change. I want that change to reflect on my GitHub project and the server. Um, so yeah, let's go GitHub slash Ian Robinson slash, um, what's this one called again? boilerplate. So I'm just going to my repository, managing packages with NPM. This is where I'm saving this. If we check out my app, currently, we're going to see that I haven't pushed the code up here. So what I want to do, uh, GitHub is a great place for collaborating with people when you're building web apps. And I haven't pushed any of the recent projects to GitHub. So what I want to do is say git push, that will push my code to um, GitHub. And so once this is complete, I can refresh this page and we'll see that we have saved our work here. Uh, we've got our echo form here. And then we also want to push to master now. So git push uh, Heroku uh, head master. This isn't going to change anything because I'm just pushing up a change to an arrow function, but it keeps everything kind of consistent, which is uh, valuable. Um, yeah. Oh, I haven't even actually staged this. So yeah, git add, uh, git commit. What happened there? Uh, switch to arrow function. Um, if you look over here, you'll see that this guy isn't the arrow function yet. It's just there. So now I've committed these changes. And so now I can git push. 
and we'll see that I've pushed my changes locally uh, to the GitHub. And so looks like it hasn't ref reflected yet. There, now it's reflected. So we've changed it so that our GitHub is reflecting this. And now um, we can say git push Heroku. The reason that I knew that this had not pushed to Heroku was because when I said git push Heroku, it said we were already up to date. So git push head uh, master. And so now I've updated the app with the, um, the production app with the arrow function, which is essentially going to make no difference. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next lesson.